Ilham Kadri is ranked amongst the most powerful women in the world. Hers is a success story inscribed in the trends and ideals of today. Diversity, inclusion and the environment playing a central role. She's a leading light in the male-dominated chemicals industry, taking over one of the world's biggest and oldest such companies in 2019, Solvay. Her mandate? To shake it up, make it green and more profitable. Ilem Kadri, many thanks for joining us on the programme. I know that a mantra that is important to you is the three Ps, uh, people, profit, planet. But pick one, which is the most important? People. Why? People need a home called the planet. There is no uh, people, there is no families, there, are no, there is no society without the environment, right? So the planet is our home, but it's about people and humanity. One thing I think is really interesting about you, Ilam, that your position now as a very successful businesswoman, you've really worked hard at it, but it wasn't necessarily on the cards. You grew up in Casablanca, you were brought up uh, by your granny, uh, who instilled some very strong values in you. What were those values that define who you are today? Yeah, my, my grandma was my first role model. She was... Uh, an illiterate woman, but she, she taught me the, the love of books and to respect people who put uh, their thoughts and, and wisdom in writing. Being an African-born uh, lady, um, she loved to listen to the wisdom, and I, and I got that from her. She taught me many things. I mean, she taught me to find my third exit, because uh, girls in Morocco were, were, were told that they have two exits in their lives, once to the, to, from the the, the, the father's home to their husband's home and the second one to the grave. And she used to laugh about it and say, this is not sexy, so find your third exit. And mine was education. Many of us won't have heard what Solvay is, but it's everywhere in our lives, yes. you say. So just briefly explain to us, what is Solvay? Solvay is a 159 years old company. It has been around for many, many years. You find us under the hood of your uh, car, for example under the bonnets of your cars, uh, in EV batteries. And there is no electrical car without Solvay inside. You find us in uh, pharmaceutical you know, solutions. We purify water, grey water. Uh, we are in hygiene and cleaning, like, for example, gels you are using these days to combat the COVID-19. Uh, we are in soda ash, our you know, very traditional business in glazing, double glazing, in cars, in building and construction. So Solvay is invisible, but it's enabling, you know, other industries. We, we call, by the way, the chemical industry the mother of industries. But what's incredible about your story, Lam, is that you've managed to break actually through two glass ceilings. Uh, one obviously being a woman, another of African origin. How has that changed who you are in terms of being a business leader? Well... In a way, Isabel, I didn't target to break any glass ceiling. I mean, I, I targeted just to live my, my life and, and live my dreams and follow my passion. Um, and I knew very early that uh, I was passionate about science and technology. I knew that. And it happened that I wanted to, to be in, in physics, chemistry and mathematics. I did engineering diploma. I followed with PhD thesis. And, and, and then I, I became passionate or interested by sustainability. And the reason is that sustainability started at home in Morocco, in Casablanca, because we had, you know, uh, lived in very frugal environment and, and the conservation of food and water meant a lot at that time. But, but there aren't many women in the industry right now, if you, if you look at the chemical industry. Uh, so what have you managed to achieve so far to try and change that paradigm? You're right, Isabel, we lose them. We, we lose them specifically in the STEM, the science, technology, engineering and math careers. We lose them for many good or bad reasons. We, we lose them maybe because at school, at youth, maybe there is an inclination to go more to bio or functional careers rather than science and business careers. We lose them uh, during important uh, you know, times in a, in a family life, which is maternity. So, and, and I've experienced it uh, in in really hard way. It's tough, uh, and and we lose them because we don't prepare a pipeline. 
we don't groom them. I, I, was, I was prepared like an athlete to take this job. How? And I was, how through development plans, uh, companies have believed in me. And, and I had mentors and sponsors, you know the difference. A mentor sp speaks to you, helps you throughout the journey. And a sponsor speaks about you when you are not in the room, when the hot jobs are being discussed. And I think maybe women and girls need to, to nurture both, to work on both mentorship and sponsorship. So I think all of this is important. And then obviously persistence, endurance, hard work. When you talk about inclusion and there you're talk, we're talking about gender parity, but inclusion is also yes. about disability, yes. it's about yes. bringing in people from yes. different ethnicities, yes. it's also about LGBT rights. Of course. Uh, so, of course. so how, as one person, can you change, you're talking about an ecosystem, of a company that, that hires tens of thousands of people? Diversity at Solvay is diversity of gender, of course, but diversity of races, ethnies, religion, uh, skin colour, background, thoughts, disability. Uh, and all of this is important. And then when, when you have the diversity, you need to have the inclusion. By the way, we put the I before the D at Solve. Because all, often in my career, I've seen it. Diversity leaves you because you don't listen to it. It's close to my heart because I'm a pure product of inclusion and diversity. I, 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 I was given a chance, but I was not waiting for that chance. I provoked it. And when it happened in front of me, when it came in, I took that train. And by the way, Isabel, we don't do it for charity. It impacts the bottom line. It makes companies stronger, more profitable. And our employees, the millennials, the future leaders are asking us for such environments. Uh, well, then that leads me to the next issue I would like to discuss, and that is sustainability, because obviously that is part of the three Ps, planet aspect. Um, now, sustainability is also one of the game changers now it's also profitable isn't it but when will it be profitable and is Solvay ready to go as far as to try and aim to become a zero emissions enterprise of course it has to be profitable because if it's not profitable it's not sustainable right um, but, but the beauty of it is that science and technology is the answer it's, go it's gonna create new solutions we, we are on that journey we joined the Paris Agreement, which is a big deal because we are abandoning coal. And this company started 159 years ago with soda ash business using coal as a primary energy. We don't know how we're going to abandon all the coal uh, as an energy in our manufacturing side around the world by 2030, but we commit to do it. So we should not be afraid. I think the companies who are not going to pick up this green rebound and are serious about the sustainability roadmap are going to fail and disappear. They will have the Kodak moments. And if we look at the t in terms of climate, in terms of the environment, the chemicals industry, when you look at these huge plants, they don't really look like particularly green places. Uh, so how polluting is Solvay today? Well, it's part of, you know, the journey of the chemical industry, right? Of course, the chemical industry is one of the CO2 emitters. We need to target the carbon neutrality, but we cannot do it alone. You need a partnership. You need private-public partnership. And we, as a company, we're going to be disruptive through redesigning our products from day one to become circular. So the big example we are working in collaboration with Veolia is the recycling of uh, batteries. You know the batteries, your car, at the end of its life, the battery is thrown away. While it's, a battery is what? Is a cathode and an anode, is full of precious metal, lithium, cobalt. And if we can extract those materials, here you are. If you use a waste, it's not a waste anymore. Now, COVID-19 has brought mis misery to millions of people's lives around the world. But interestingly, I've also been hearing increasingly that it's become an accelerator for change in big companies. Is this something you have seen as well at board level? It's the first time where we had, you know, several risks taken independently coming at the same time and hitting us. First, the security and safety of our people. Huh? Back in March, I was the chief mask officer, not the executive officer anymore. We were all looking and dying to find enough masks. 
to protect our employees. We had to protect our liquidities and cash, because without liquidities, you don't survive. We had to take care of our value chain and customers to not disrupt the supply chains because the borders were closing, like in Europe, right? And I said it to our teams, we have two paths, right? One is to complain and excuse ourselves because the macros are really bad, and they were bad because we are also exposed to, to transportation. The second path is to accelerate the reform and emerge stronger. The employees of Sorbet has taken the second path. And it's amazing. I'm so proud of them because after nine months of the crisis, we are a better company. I, re I really believe it. This has been a really tough time. True. Now, you as head of Solvay, you've also are involved in restructuring, yes. job losses. Yes. How do you sleep at night when you know that you know, people's lives are being destroyed as the world moves on? It's tough and painful, you know? No CEO is there to, you know, to, to, with the mandate to, to restructure. We like to grow, we like to build jobs. And I learned to dare and care. You dare of taking tough decisions. That's my role with my executive committee, is to ensure that the company survives through crisis, right? And restructuring, unfortunately, can be part of that tough moments, right? But if you don't do it, you will fail and more jobs will disappear. But you need to do it with care and respect. And we launched the Solve Solidarity Fund. My team and I, we cut our salaries, right, 15%. Uh, in the year, the, the, the board of directors followed, and we called on the investors to donate part of their dividend to, that, to this foundation to support our employees, their families, and the communities in need because of COVID-19. And in six weeks, by the way, we collected 12 million euro. As, as I've looked at your career path, mentors have been very important. You still seek mentorship, yes, but from yeah. the junior members, yes. from the young guys, yes. why? What are they teaching you? They're teaching me a lot. They're teaching me to unlearn and relearn. Uh, they are teaching me um, their wisdom. Because at the end of the day, what is the role of a CEO, of a leader? is to leave a legacy. And, and to give that baton I was given uh, with a company in better shape than the one I inherited with, right? For them, for these, for these young people. They have challenges of protecting the planet. I didn't grow up, I, I grew up with sustainability at home. That's my personal story. But I, I didn't grow up thinking I need to save the planet. They do. I have a lot of empathy and respect for the future generation who are gonna really, you know, replace us. So I need to, to listen to them. And I do. And they're very generous with their wisdom. So just tell me then, from everything you've learned through your career path that's taken you around the world, uh, working for a myriad of different companies, what makes a good leader? For leadership, you need to have the emotional intelligence. You, ne you need to have the empathy. You need to, to dare show in your vulnerability. Vulnerability is a strength, it's not a weakness. Uh, and I truly believe that leaders who do not have those attributes are going to fail and they will disappear. What's your vulnerability? Um, people. People. I love them. I love, um, I love to be at, at the service of humanity. Uh, but I know how to dare and care. And then finally, you've obviously received some good advice along the way. What's the best piece of advice you can give? Have a dream and live your dreams. Go after them. And dream big, bigger than what you can even think you, you, you can achieve, dream big and go after them. Ilam, many thanks for giving us your time. I've really enjoyed this conversation. Thank you very much, Isabel. <laughs>